So we've just seen a photo of Old Harry's Rock on the Dorset coastline, which is our example of a cave, arch, stack and stump system. And we need to now look at exactly how that's formed. Now that's quite a, a complex sequence of formation, uh, quite a lot of stages, but we can actually kind of break it down. Now, though it's not really mentioned in the name of the landform, what we actually have at the first stage is a crack in the headland forming. We've then got our cave here, our arch, shown by this bit of the diagram here, our stack, and then our stump. Whenever I'm teaching this, I always say to my students that they should remember this at the top of their exam paper. If it's asked a question on the cave, arch, stack, and stump formation, draw this little diagram out here, really, really simple, then put the C, C, A, double S at the top. Underneath those, you can then put your numbers. One, two, three, four, and five. And what we're now going to do is we're going to do five statements explaining firstly how the crack is formed, how this then develops into the cave, then into the arch, then the stack, and then the stump. And by following that kind of step-by-step -step number sequence, we're going to ensure that we achieve this sequence part of our PEST model. So we have our five-step sequence of how cave, arch, stack, and stump forms. And we're going to use this to kind of make sure that we achieve this major part of our uh, physical geography uh, sort of landform formation question by making sure we get a step-by-step -step process. So stage one then. Basically what happens is weathering processes such as freeze-fall, okay, really important there, good terminology and also a process. Uh, what happens is the freeze-fall creates lines of weakness or fault lines in the headland, which over time can widen into cracks in the headland. Um, you know, you've got to remember that these processes repeat regularly and during freeze-fall water can expand uh, by about 9%. So that constant expanding process can eventually create quite significant fault lines in the rock. The combined action of this physical weathering and uh, erosional processes such as hydraulic action can eventually erode the crack and develop it into a cave. So again, we've got our processes in here. We've Again, we've mentioned the physical weathering, but we've also now talked about things such as hydraulic action. So we're making sure that we've got the correct terminology and processes in there, and we're showing that sequence. We can kind of start crossing off here. We've talked about the crack. We've now talked about the cave. So then the third step is that over time, importantly getting that aspect in there about referring to time, uh, the hydraulic action and other erosional processes such as uh, corrosion, which is where kind of fragments of rock are hurled against the uh, shoreline by the force of the waves, uh, these processes will deepen the cliff, uh, sort of, sorry, deepen the cave until it forms all the way through the headland. That may be in the case that two caves forming from either side of the headland meet or one cave may just experience such high rates of erosion that it develops all the way through. This will then leave an arch. So again, we can now tick off that part there. In the exam, I'd highly recommend doing that. Make sure that you're not missing out any steps in the sequence. Number four then, slightly longer to explain. What will eventually happen is that the top of the arch will be constantly weakened by weathering processes. These may be physical processes such as the freeze fall that we earlier mentioned, but it may also be biological processes such as roots trying to go into it. Um, you know, again, we're naming processes, so we're kind of meeting that part of the pest model that we suggested. The base of the uh, arch is also going to be experiencing high rates of erosion from things such as hydraulic action between the high water mark and the low water mark. Eventually, remember, using terms like eventually suggest an understanding of the time period at which this is going to take. It's not going to be a quick process. Uh, the top of the arch is going to become unsupported and collapses. When it does collapse, this is going to leave behind a piece of land that is separate from the main headland, which we call a stack. Again, we can cross that off there. We're now making sure that we're following that sequence all the way through. The fifth and final uh, point then is that obviously that stack is not going to be uh, sort of just left to its own devices it is still going to be subject to the force of the waves and the base of it will be eroded again between that high and low water mark eventually that base will become narrow due to that constant erosion by processes like hydraulic action and the stack will kind of become top heavy and collapse into the sea that will just leave the base part of it left standing that uh, base part, that section of rock, 
is referred to as a stump and is quite regularly only visible at low tides, as in the case of Old Harry's Wife at Old Harry's Rock. Uh, it's literally just below the water level and is only visible uh, when the tide is at its lowest point. So once we put that in, again we can then cross out that section and we've made sure that we followed our sequence all the way through.